Hello and welcome to Breaking Down, the series where we take an in-depth look at a Fire Emblem unit from a gameplay perspective. Before we start, I would like to thank the people who support me in making content like this by backing the channel on Patreon, where for just £1 a month you can get access to a bunch of benefits, including voting on the release order for this series. For more info, check the link in the description. Today, we will be looking at the daughter of Count Galatea, Ingrid. Whilst this series is not focused around plot, there is always a chance for spoilers, and certain elements of the game and its structure and story will inevitably be mentioned, so if that is a concern for you, feel free to give it a miss. Also, where relevant, this is considering the maddening difficulty on a regular new game file with no exploits or excessive grinding. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel, and if you could also leave a rating on the video, it helps it to reach other people, as does dropping a comment, so I would really appreciate it. Ingrid is a member of the Blue Lions, so if they are your choice of house, she is available from Chapter 1. With the Black Eagles or Golden Deer, she will need to be recruited. This can be done by meeting her recruit requirements, which lie in Dexterity and Flying, and the specifics vary based on her support rank with Byleth. Alternatively, if her support with Byleth reaches a B rank, she may ask to join your house on any day following this, as is the case with most students. If you are using female Byleth, you are likely going to be investing into flying to access the Pegasus Knight class, and as a result, these requirements are very easy to hit, since Byleth's base 9 dex is enough for the C plus requirements as it is, so you can usually just pick her up manually when you want her. With male Byleth, you are probably better off just going for the B support and getting her to join by her own request, since flying is less likely to be a strong early investment. Due to the way that certain classes work, Ingrid actually has some interesting quirks as an out-of-house recruit. The Pegasus Knight class has increased growth as an enemy class compared to the player variant, and if you recruit her from Chapter 6, her growth will actually factor in the enemy boosts here, giving her some significant stat increases in comparison to where she would usually be on average at that point. I will go more into the specifics of this later when we go into using her from a gameplay perspective, but it's something that is definitely worth you being aware of. Ingrid's personal ability is Lady Knight, which gives her 3 might and 5 hit when using gambits. Extra hit on these attacks is always going to be appreciated, and with her charm stat, this can make her one of your most reliable early gambit users, particularly in the early game, which is always nice. The extra might here is fine, but honestly gambit might is rarely too relevant. Usually when you're using gambits, it is for the area of effect crowd control that they can provide, rather than their kill power, although nudging the enemies a little closer to their deaths can make finishing them off a little easier. The downsides of this ability lie in the fact that gambits are pretty limited, only being able to be thrown out a couple of times a map, so for a lot of situations her personal ability will just not hold much of an impact, giving it a pretty limited scope for effectiveness. On top of this, if Ingrid is equipped with a supporting utility gambit, such as Stride, Retribution, or Impregnable Wall, then her personal ability has no effect at all, and for all intents and purposes, she doesn't have a personal ability in these situations, which is never ideal. Ingrid possesses a minor crest of Daphnel, giving her a 40% chance to boost her might by 5 when using combat arts. This is actually really nice and can spike her damage quite significantly, especially early when 5 might is very impactful. A 40% trigger chance is also somewhat reliable, and on the whole this crest helps her out a decent amount. It also gives her the combat arts Burning Quake when using its associated relic, Luin. This can pack quite a punch, boosting Might by 8 as well as 30% of Ingrid's speed, and it can be a really solid burst of damage. It also gives 20 crit, 10 avoid, and has effectiveness on dragon foes. Having a crest at all also allows her to use any relic weapon without taking damage in response, which is nice. Moving on to look at Ingrid's skill spread, and the thing that really stands out here is that it's all boons. There are no banes or budding talents, just four boons, lying in swords, lances, riding, and flying. So the most notable thing here is that regardless of what you want to do with Ingrid, she won't be slowed down at all in any area when raising her skills, and 4 boons is not a small amount either, so she will be accelerated pretty frequently. Honestly, this is really nice and can aid her a lot with being extremely flexible. Where things start to fall apart is when we look at what she actually gets from her skills. Her pool of combat arts and abilities is somewhat lacking. Her lances do bring some tools to the table, hit and run is an interesting combat art, providing a boost of damage and hit, whilst also moving the user back one tile after hitting. This can make for some interesting plays and can aid especially with the Kanto skill from many mounted classes, but it lacks the kill power to be too relevant in the late game. At the A rank, Ingrid gets Frozen Lance, a magical combat art. This means that despite using physical weaponry, it runs off of Ingrid's magic stat, rather than her strength, and it hits on an enemy's resistance rather than their defence. It also adds 30% of her dexterity as damage to the attack. 
Despite Ingrid not typically being used as a magical unit, this can still find some niche use to be able to target the defensive stat which is usually lower for a lot of enemies, especially against certain targets like Great Knights. That being said, the A rank is very late to get this. When other units are able to pick it up from a budding talent or at the C plus rank, it definitely doesn't feel good to have it come so late. This can hold some more potential if you went for a more off-meta Ingrid build, but we will get more into that later. Similarly, she also gets Hexblade from A rank in Swords, which is another magical attack, but this is basically just the worst version of Frozen Lance. If you end up in a class that carries Sword Fair, you could make use of it, but it's probably not going to be something that's very impactful, if it ends up doing anything at all. Outside of that, the Sword Boon might help with some class certifications, but it won't be something that's overly present. The Riding and Flying Boons are only relevant for certifying for classes or accelerating the ranks to get abilities held within them, but flying is especially helpful here, for reaching so many classes throughout the game and picking up some skills you may wish to go for depending on your build. In general, this can massively reduce the amount of investment that you need. The other thing to note here is that Ingrid gets Battalion Desperation at the C rank in Authority, a tool which she can make great use of. This is in part thanks to her stats, starting with her speed. A base of 8 with a 60% growth will let her excel in this area, especially as time goes on. While some enemies in the late game will still be beyond her, she will be able to keep up with and even land doubles on a lot of pretty quick enemies. Unfortunately, her strength does not back this up. With only an 8 base, the joint lowest amongst units specced for physical combat, and a lowly 35% growth, this will leave her trailing here, and she will likely need some support in her damage. Oddly enough, she also has a 35% magic growth, and with a 6 base it actually isn't very far behind her physical combat, and enemies tend to have much lower resistance than defense. Charm is a strong area for Ingrid, giving her great early gambit accuracy. She also has a solid resistance stat for tanking magical enemies, although whilst her HP is decent, her physical defense is nothing special. Ingrid is a bit of a mixed bag statistically. There are some nice things in here, but she would also like a boost in some areas. One more thing to note about Ingrid is that she has two might supports, one with Felix and one with Sylvain. These units can all be used to support each other very well, and Ingrid can make a great adjutant for one of them if you wanted to amp up their damage. This is aided by the ease in which she can access flying classes, particularly when supporting Sylvain, who loves to go Wyvernlord. This is a great trio of might supports, and all three units can help each other out a lot. Let's move on to looking at Ingrid from a gameplay perspective, and if you are with the Blue Lions, she is one of the easiest units to rule out of taking into Chapter 1. All she really brings to the table is 1 range damage with Tempest Lance, but she does less 1 range damage than Felix and Sylvain, the same as Dadu, and these also bring many other advantages, not to mention other candidates like Annette. So with that in mind you can pretty much just cross her off immediately, unless you just want her around. The other small advantages she has are a solid base resistance for tanking units like Dorothea and Hubert, and being a girl to buff Sylvain if you chose to bring him along for the ride. She does make a really solid case to be one of your first units to receive a battalion, with her very decent 8 base charm alongside her personal ability amping up both damage and accuracy. This will also help to raise her authority ranks from very early on, which can be appreciated to fast track her in this regard, although any unit would appreciate this. As for her early investment here, there are no unique priorities for Ingrid, so pushing into bows to reach the D rank for curved shot is the way to go. Her damage may still be lacking, but free range will help her contribute more and give her some reliable chip. Whilst her strength isn't good, immediate access to Tempest Lance for no investment does help to offset that a little, giving her a strong long range attack, although pretty much any unit can access this from very early on, just as Ingrid can with Curve Shot in the same way. They are global tools available at the D rank in their respective weapon types. Still, most units do want Tempest Lance and Curve Shot, and not having to invest to get one of these is nice. Raising her bows to the D rank will also allow her to class into Fighter at level 5, which is her best option here. It provides a point of strength whilst in the class, and mastering it gives the strength plus 2 ability, although like with most units you will likely have to return to this later, as it will probably not be done before level 10. Ingrid is also one of the very rare units who actually makes a solid case to go into Myrmidon too. This is because whilst many units in the game require things like brave combat arts or huge damage nukes like Vengeance, Ingrid may still be very reliant on doubling, and speed plus 2 from mastering the class can actually help her reliability here quite significantly. Ingrid is very fast, but so are a lot of late game enemies, and every point of speed can be very relevant. Now that we are touching on Ingrid's intermediate class, we need to go into the difference between using Ingrid in-house within the Blue Lions or out of house as a recruit in the Golden Deer or Black Eagles. 
If you take the path from Noble to Fighter, and then were to class Ingrid into Pegasus Knight, which is a reasonable class path, and raise her one more level to level 11, her average stats will trail drastically compared to where they are if you recruit her at level 11 on Chapter 6, as can be seen on screen now. This is because of the previously mentioned differences between the enemy and player versions of the Pegasus Knight class, and the raised stats here are obviously something Ingrid would really appreciate. Two extra points of strength can be very nice, not only because of the damage, but because it also puts her closer to offsetting more weapon weight. This couples very nicely with the additional point of speed that Out of House Ingrid has here. It isn't only offensively where the Out of House version thrives either. When recruited, Ingrid will average three more points of all of HP, Defense, and Resistance, making her a fair bit bulkier and much less susceptible to falling to enemy attacks. This would be relevant for most units, but for Ingrid it is especially so, as she lacks many of the powerful combat arts or abilities that allow most units to thrive, and as a result, she ends up being one of the most statistically reliant units in the game, and can often find herself right on the baseline for a lot of kill benchmarks. Now there are some trade-offs to this, some of her ranks can be trailing in comparison to where they would usually be, particularly things like axes, bows and authority, which likely would have seen some growth and investment by this point for a self-trained Ingrid, but will be sat at the very bottom of E rank when recruited at this stage. The authority in particular may leave her with weaker battalions, which may negate some of the advantages from the stat boosts in the immediate short term, although once you race her in this area this will negate this and leave her enjoying the statistical benefits that Out of House Ingrid has. She will also be slightly behind in some class masteries. She won't have acquired HP plus 5 from Noble, nor will she have made any progress towards mastering Fighter for Strength plus 2. There is also the one level of Intermediate class leveling from 10 to 11, which will have given her some mastery in an Intermediate class. Again, this may leave her trailing slightly in the short term, but you will be able to catch up on this. Of course, this lost investment on Ingrid doesn't just vanish, it has now instead been spent on another unit, who occupied the spot that deploying Ingrid would have taken up, or received the tutoring that would have boosted her weapon ranks, aiding their development instead. Alternatively, that spot may have gone to a unit who is much stronger in the early game to give you an easier time through those starting chapters. The fact that Ingrid is nothing special throughout this period is another reason why recruiting her on Chapter 6 can be so advantageous, because you really don't lose out on anything from not having her for Chapters 2-5, to five, and a lot of other units can provide a lot more to your party during this time, even if you don't keep them around for the long term. Despite some small drawbacks, Out of House Ingrid will almost always outperform her in-house equivalents, and she will be a much better contributor in the Black Eagles or Golden Deer than she will be for the Blue Lions. Before we get back onto her pathing, I want to take a moment to talk about stat boosters here. I usually wouldn't bring them up, most units can appreciate them to some degree, and who wants them and when will depend on several things, such as benchmarks at the time, your party, and the sheer luck of RNG on stat level ups. By and large the player can distribute these as they see fit, and it won't make a massive amount of difference because for most units and most builds, stats aren't overly important. However, Ingrid is not most units, and as mentioned before, she is one of the few who remains very statistically reliant throughout the game. This means that stat boosts, particularly in speed and strength, will go much further on her than they will on most units. While strength can always be nice for the damage, the weapon weight that this can offset helps Ingrid out significantly. In general, she should be one of your main contenders for these if you are using her, as the mileage you can get from the stat boost will be amplified. In a lot of Fire Emblem games, a unit being dependent on stat boosters is usually quite crippling, because these are highly contested or sought after, but here that just isn't really the case. Stat boosts are not particularly highly contested at all and actually aren't that expensive of a commitment in Three Houses, which is definitely something Ingrid can be thankful for. Regardless of whether you are using Ingrid in or out of house, it actually doesn't have a massive amount of impact on what you want to do with her, just how effective she is at it. You also have a couple of options with what you can do with Ingrid from this point, and where you want to go with her. Let's start with her mainline builds, and then go into some other options at the end. Because of her lack of combat arts and relevant abilities, she normally ends up being a light version of other units' roles. The main applications for this are as an enemy phase dodge tank, or a player phase unit taking advantage of her speed and battalion desperation. What's important to note here is that you aren't making an all or nothing decision, but more so choosing a specification, an area in which Ingrid prioritises. An Ingrid who chooses to focus on the player phase will still be able to dodge tank to a reasonable degree, just not with the same level of consistency as the enemy phase option, and an Ingrid who focuses on enemy phasing will still be able to double some enemies, but will lack the damage and speed to double or kill as much as the player phase variant. Going down the player phase path here requires her to be a bit more conscious of her intermediate classing, but in either case Pegasus Knight is a really solid choice for Ingrid's first intermediate class. 
It is a very strong immediate option thanks to its 6 move, flight and canto access, and when you have mastered it you gain access to Darting Blow, an ability that boosts Ingrid's speed by 6 when she initiates combat. This is a massive boost to her doubling potential, and whilst it obviously holds more long term relevance for the player phase focus build, it also has a lot of short term relevance regardless. The reason I would recommend picking this up first is that this is around the time when a lot of enemies will be weighing themselves down with heavy steel weaponry that they really don't have the strength to support, and by maximising Ingrid's speed here, she can double and terrorise a lot of the opposition forces. Even if you plan to pivot into an enemy phase build, this boosts Ingrid's immediate contribution so heavily that I really don't think you want to miss out on it, plus Pegasus Knight is so strong in its own right. Mastering Brigand can also help significantly with this. This gives access to the ability Death Blow, which is very similar to Darting Blow, however rather than aiding speed, this boosts attack by 6 when the user initiates combat. This will obviously allow Ingrid to kill many more enemies, it is a huge spike to her damage. Brigand also provides a boost to her damage whilst in the class itself, although it is much less mobile than the flying option as a trade-off, whilst also being slower. Brigand requires C axes to guarantee a qualification, which is perfectly attainable. Death Blow and Darting Blow are going to be core to the player phase build throughout the game, however they will only see short term relevance for the enemy phase build which means you may want to pass on Death Blow here in order to stay in classes which benefit her better at the time, such as Pegasus Knight. The skill hit plus 20 gained by mastering the Archer class is also very desirable, thanks to its massive boost to reliability. Archer requires C bows to guarantee certification, or it can be gambled at D+, so it shouldn't be very out of the way to access. The big issue with hit plus 20 on Ingrid is that she might just not have room for it in her endgame skill setups. That being said, I think it's probably worth running in most cases, it's just that Ingrid has a lot of skills that she wants to run, and some sacrifices will have to be made. The other thing that is very important for both iterations of Ingrid is to invest in her authority. Like with any unit, a huge benefit of this is being able to use the best available battalions, and get the statistical and gambit benefits that come with that, which is always important when a unit will want to be in a flying class due to their limited options in this regard, which Ingrid will want to be regardless of her path. However, for the player phase build, Battalion Desperation becomes available at the C rank, which is an incredibly important tool for her. This ability makes it so that when her Battalion Endurance is below 33%, if Ingrid would double an opponent, her attacks occur constantly consecutively, giving her the chance to rip through opponents without having to take a counterattack. This removes the requirement of having to keep topping up Ingrid's HP between kills, and she can actually take a hit herself if she needs to, although this will damage that all important Battalion Endurance because Battalion Desperation will not activate if her Battalion is broken. By making use of this tool, Ingrid essentially has the Brave effect that is granted by combat arts such as Swift Strikes and Point Blank Volley. But because it already requires Ingrid to double, isn't it just worse than those abilities? Well yes, but also no. There are some advantages to Battalion Desperation that those brave combat arts don't get. The main one is complete weapon and range flexibility. Swift Strikes is locked to Lances and Point Blank Volley is locked to Bows, with both being limited to one range, but Battalion Desperation allows Ingrid to freely switch between weapons, making use of Bows against flying opponents or melees, and melee weapons against foes where that is more logical, whilst being able to attack from any range she wishes. By doing this, she can also exploit any effective weapons. Swift Strikes isn't doing much against a Fortress Knight, but Ingrid can use her Brave Effect with a Hammer, or if you want to be really techy, a Levin Sword, and bring him down with ease. Rapiers or Horse Slayers can be used against Mounted Foes, etc. It also allows her to use the higher might of Axes compared to the Lance or Bow combat arts, which can amp up her damage quite noticeably. Battalion Desperation can also be used with Brave Weapons, in order to get all four hits in before the opponent has any chance to retaliate, which can be extremely useful against enemies where you just need a bit more force to bring them down. Quad hitting without retaliation is exceptionally strong, although the brave weapons can be a bit on the heavier side, it is still an incredibly valuable option to have at your disposal. Once Ingrid reaches level 20, her best class is Wyvern Rider. Flight, Seven Move, Kanto and Axe Fair are all extremely helpful here, and regardless of where your Ingrid is focused, this will get the best performance from her at this time. The class requires C Flying and B Axes to guarantee the certification, which is incredibly attainable and won't cause any major problems at all, especially if you're okay with gambling at lower. We can pretty much wrap up a player phase focus Ingrid here, as she doesn't need any other major investments and is basically good to go. All that's left for her to do is slot into a master class once she hits level 30. 
Falconite versus Wyvern Lord sounds like a choice that you need to make, but honestly it's not. The shared flight rank makes it pretty easy to actually just certify into both. The reason you would want to do this is that the classes have different stat modifiers. Falconite provides 1 strength but 5 speed, whereas Wyvern Lord provides 4 strength and 4 speed. The Wyvern class also specialises in the heavier but harder hitting axes, whereas Falconite prefers the lighter but weaker lancers, which amplifies these speed and damage differences further. The logic here is pretty obvious. Check the enemies, and if the speed from Falconite makes a difference to allow for important doubles, then you can roll with that. If not, then you can break out Wyvern Lord and make use of its higher damage. Bear in mind that various weapons may alter the speed of Ingrid, so that may need to be factored in. More often than not, the Wyvern option will likely be preferred, but it can really depend on how your specific Ingrid turns out. A player phase Ingrid has a lot of skills she can make use of. Death and Darting Blow will almost always be locked in, and you will likely want Battalion Desperation at all times too, but past that you can be quite flexible. Hit plus 20 and the relevant Weapon Prowess skill can provide considerably more reliability. Strength or Speed plus 2 can boost the relevant stats should amplifiers here be required, and later in the game you could even run one of the Weapon Crit boosting abilities. Like in most cases, the Fair skill from the S plus rank is probably out of reach without serious grinding. The actual play here is pretty simple. You want to identify threats who Ingrid is capable of doubling and eliminate them. Her selection of targets can be pretty flexible, since her choice of weapons is capable of being so flexible. Again, this is something you should decide on based on the challenges of the map you are playing. As mentioned earlier, she will still have a pretty solid avoid stat thanks to her speed, the avoid plus 10 ability from her flying class, and if you choose to run it, the bonus from the prowess skill. This means that if you need to lean on her to dodge some attacks in a pinch, she can do so with some degree of consistency, but it won't be completely reliable. For that we have to revisit enemy phase Ingrid. The classing here is mostly the same, however the abilities you will want to run changes quite a lot. The main one that she will want to make use of is Alert Stance, or its advanced variant, Alert Stance Plus, which are required from the B and A plus flying ranks respectively. These abilities give a boost to avoid when the turn is ended with the wait command, 15 for the baby version and 30 for the upgrade. This is obviously quite a hefty cost, losing out on any action on the player phase, however in return the avoid boost can be crucial to guaranteeing a successful enemy phase, where Ingrid is deftly able to dodge any incoming blows. Typically when running an enemy phase build you will want to try and stack crit, however since Ingrid lacks battalion wrath, doing so in a dodge tanking build can be quite difficult. This means that Ingrid often will not kill when dodge tanking. Now bear in mind she can still crit, especially if you stack crit in other areas, but it won't be consistent. Again, with pathing you will want to look at Wyvern Lord and Falconite for the same reasons as before, nothing overly different here. If the various benchmarks of either class make a difference, go for that one. Ingrid's choice of battalion here is much more important, however, as you really need something that will amp up her avoid and ideally hit and crit too. The lack of guaranteed crits is a huge loss for EP Ingrid in comparison to her peers. Whilst in an ideal world you would just be able to end turn multiple times until Ingrid has slowly whittled them all down, enemies that are left alive after one enemy phase will be able to move and target your other units, often causing you to have to secede ground to play around this, which would not be required if the enemies were dead. Now again, Ingrid will still crit a good chunk of enemies who she faces, providing you stack out her crit as best you can. You can use killer weaponry, the relevant weapon crit ability, and possibly boosts from battalions to help you out here. Equipment such as the crit ring may also be desirable, but you also may want to opt for an evasion ring to dodge opponents attacks more consistently. Once again, Ingrid's stats will also factor in here. Crit is boosted by half of the unit's combined dex and luck, but you also have to account for the opponent's critical avoid. This should still give Ingrid around a 50% crit chance on most enemies, so she will probably kill some of them, it's just not locked in. Ingrid is also still quite fast, even without the bonuses from Darting Blow, and if the two attacks aren't enough to bring an enemy down on their own, it is also two chances to crit, further increasing your odds of bringing down more foes. An enemy phase build will usually look something like a prowess ability, alert stance plus, weapon crit plus 10, hit plus 20, and something else to fill out the final slot. One of death or darting blow, strength or speed plus 2, etc. Whilst Ingrid misses out on kill power here in comparison to her peers, there are some small things going in her favour. Her great resistance stat makes it easier for her to eat hits from mages should she need to, and her charm gives her a great chance of dodging enemy gambits. These are nothing major, but they do go a little way in making up for the loss of Battalion Wrath. Overall, I do prefer the player phase application, I think its upsides over the combat art users provide some tangible benefits, and it's more of a give and take, whereas the EP build is basically just a worse version of what you would ideally have. That being said, either will be perfectly serviceable and Ingrid will actually have a similar set of advantages and issues in both. 
able to help out in some important and useful ways, but lacking the consistency or reliability to be useful in all situations. Before we finish this video, I would like to go over a couple of less standard applications of Ingrid that I feel can hold a lot of merit in the right scenarios. I'm not going to cover these in a ton of detail, but I do think they are worth a brief overview. The first of these is a path which is common for units who lack a powerful combat art, because it brings one of its own, and that is going into Sniper, an advanced class requiring A bows to guarantee certification. When Sniper is mastered, it provides the combat art Hunter's Volley. This is a brave attack, guaranteeing two attacks in succession, allowing her much more consistency in her damage output. You do lose a lot of mobility here compared to the flying player phase option, but the range of the class and combat art can compensate for this. The Crest of Daphnel can also help with Hunter's Volley's damage, which is appreciated when it activates. Your build here will look very similar to a player phase build mentioned earlier. Darting Blow, Death Blow and Battalion Desperation are all very strong options, with Hit Plus 20 and Bow Prowess likely rounding out the build. It may seem odd to continue using Darting Blow and Battalion Desperation, but in a lot of situations a Brave Bow can end up outputting more damage, and this may be required due to Ingrid's lacking strength. Hunter's Volley is just there for the enemies who she can't double naturally. This build will provide more reliability than the other player phase option, but it does come at the cost of a lot of mobility. One thing that may also be desirable is to actually delay going Sniper until a bit later than you normally would, until Ingrid begins to struggle to double some opponents, and take advantage of Wyvern Rider in the mid game when she can really shine in the class. So Sniper is a solid player phase alternative, but what about the enemy phase? Well for this we can look at a very standard low health build, making use of Vantage from the Mercenary class and Wrath from the Warrior class. Vantage allows the user to attack first when their health is below 50% and the opponent initiates combat. The Mercenary class which this is locked behind can be accessed at an intermediate level with a requirement of Sea Swords to guarantee certification. This is easily reached, especially thanks to Ingrid's boon. Wrath has the same trigger, requiring the opponent to initiate combat while the user is below 50% HP, however this grants a boost of 50 crit. The Warrior class requires 8 axes to guarantee the qualification, and isn't available until level 20 as it is an advanced class. Combining these tools can provide the crit that the dodge tanking build lacks, and give Ingrid a consistent enemy phase. On top of this, none of these tools lock out the player phase like Alert Stance does, so there is potential for her to be a dual phase unit. This sounds like it fixes all of the problems I was complaining about with enemy phase Ingrid earlier, so why not just do this? Well once again it comes back to that mid game. This takes Ingrid's strongest point to the time when she can be a real asset to your team and terrorise the slow weighed down enemies with her high speed, and rather than putting her in a high move class to exploit this, it shoves her in mercenary and warrior. She does end up much better late game but it comes at the cost of her mid game and personally I'm not a big fan of this trade off. If you did opt for this, a skill loadout of Wrath, Vantage, Weapon Prowess, Weapon Crit and Hit Plus 20 would be ideal. Of course, after getting Wrath you want to hop back into a flying class, and in this scenario Wyvern Lord will usually come out on top, especially because you will already have the Axe rank from going into Warrior. All in all, either of these options will make Ingrid perfectly serviceable, because they are the safety net for basically any physical unit, but they also won't let her stand out either. There is one other option that I want to go over, and that is making use of Ingrid as a mage. Whilst her magic is mediocre, that isn't the focus here. She is significantly faster than many mages, and as a result can double a lot of things that they can't. This means that despite her actual damage stats not being up to par, her damage output in combat can be incredibly high, as she can double with magic on enemies with low resistance, and basically tear them apart. Battalion Desperation also plays a role here again, and can be used to take out enemies from any range without having to face a counterattack. Spells also typically have quite low weight to aid with this, so basically anything she would normally double she will still double in a magic based class, but she will now be hitting on their lower resistance. Sure, she is also using the lower magic stat, but her strength is nothing special to begin with, so there actually isn't a massive drop off here, typically just the two points of base stats. While spells are lower might than most weapons, let's not forget that Ingrid does have access to Frozen Lance, to be able to still take advantage of the might of these when you want to, and with a magic oriented build this can become quite a powerful kill tool. Ingrid's spell list itself does bring some nice tools too though. The reason spell Thorin, obtained at the C rank, has 3 range and can let her snipe out enemy combatants. In the Faith Tree, again at C, she gains access to Physic a long range healing spell which allows her to patch up her allies from a distance and keep them healthy, as well as granting her a lot of free EXP over the course of the game, which can help with both maintaining levels and mastering her classes. 
A rank Reason Spell Fimble Vetra provides more damage as well as a 25% crit chance, although it is fairly heavy and inaccurate. The B rank Faith Spell Seraphim has effective damage against monsters, something which she can take great advantage of to break their barriers or just straight up double and kill them. Ingrid really can do a lot of work in this role, although she is not without some drawbacks, which I don't think ruin anything, but they are something to be aware of so you can manage and play around them. Because she relies on doubling for her damage output, certain enemies can be very tricky to take down, such as Swordmasters, Assassins or especially Falconites, due to their high resistance alongside their speed. Another issue Ingrid faces is that because she uses two casts on most kills, she can actually run out of spells quite quickly. To help compensate for this, I would recommend equipping her with a Levin Sword as an alternative option. When upgraded, this also has 1-3 to three range, so it can be useful for that too. On top of this, she still has Frozen Lance as likely her best damage option, to help her blow up enemies in a single powerful hit. This is especially prevalent against Mounted Foes, where she can make use of the effective damage of the Horse Slayer whilst using this to quickly erase their HP bars. The path to get her online can be quite odd. You will want to go into Monk at level 5, then back into a physical class with Pegasus Knight at an intermediate stage in order to acquire Darting Blow. Then jump into Mage to master the class and pick up the Fiendish Blow ability, which is basically the equivalent of Death Blow but for magical units, boosting magic by 6 when she initiates combat. When you reach level 20, it is important you class into Warlock as soon as possible, in order to access its base magic stat, which will almost always be higher than Ingrid's at the time, and on average boost her magic by 4 points. You don't need to actually use Warlock, you just want its base magic that you get from certifying into it. From here, I prefer Valkyrie as an endgame class. It provides range modifiers to Ingrid's black magic spells, boosting them by 1, a modifier of plus 4 to her magic to aid her damage even further, and solid movement with 6 move in Kanto. With her Riding Boon, she will easily be able to access the class too. Furthermore, mastering the class grants Uncanny Blow, which boosts hit by 30 when the user initiates combat, a great alternative to hit plus 20 to save you having to go into Archer. Dark Flyer is another good option, with Flight, an extra point of move, and Black Tome Fair, but it does have its drawbacks. It has no magic modifier, so Black Tome Fair only actually provides one point of might to black magic spells over Valkyrie, and it gives nothing to Seraphim. More importantly, there is also only one Flying Magical Battalion in the game, and there is a chance that might already be in use by another unit, so if that was the case, Ingrid would not be able to use a relevant battalion, hence my preference for Valkyrie here. At the master level, you could potentially look at other options like Dark Knight, Mortal Savant or Gremory, but I think Valkyrie is still the option here. Ideally, your skill loadout would be Darting Blow, Fiendish Blow, Uncanny Blow, Battalion Desperation, and either Magic Plus 2, Dark Magic Range Plus 1, or Reason Prowess taking up the last spot, depending on your preference. Other things such as Lance or Sword Prowess to take advantage of Frozen Lance or Hexblade and the Levin Sword respectively are also available. Obviously, if you recruit her out of house, you will just go back to Monk later with a Knowledge Gem equipped if you think Magic Plus 2 is something you will want access to. Although, honestly, I think her other options for skills here make it fine to give this a miss if you want. Just start from the Pegasus Knight step. Out of House Ingrid is still significantly better even if you choose to make her a magical unit though, particularly once again because you don't have to take her through her uninspiring early game. This build sounds like a meme, but honestly it really is very effective, and you can actually find her out damaging your traditional mages in a lot of scenarios simply because she has a significantly easier time doubling a lot of opponents, and can easily tear them apart as a result. One thing I would recommend is giving her a magic staff and making sure her authority is looked after, so she can get a sizeable damage boost from battalions, just to aid the fact that her own personal magic stat is nothing special. Of course, she could also make use of Thyasus or Caduceus to boost her range, and allow her to take out foes from further away. A magic-oriented Ingrid is certainly non-standard, however it certainly isn't bad, and in a weird roundabout way, it might actually end up being lower investment than a lot of her other builds. I honestly think you could make the case that this is Ingrid's strongest build path, it really can be that potent. High speed doubles plus a high damage nuke from Frozen Lance gives her a way to handle most opposition, a lot of which she can do from extreme range too. Whatever you choose to go with here, whether it be a player phase flyer, a dodge tank, a sniper, a wrath vantage user or a spellcaster, she will likely be a unit who takes a fair bit of work, particularly to get off the ground in her own house, but once she is past that point she can be a valuable member of your party and one where the investment really does pay off, especially when you consider how contested a lot of things she actually wants really are in reality. 
Overall, I think Ingrid is a really interesting unit. She has a lot of build options, and some of these are things which really aren't that common to run in Three Houses. In some ways, Ingrid feels to me like a unit from a past Fire Emblem, such as Path of Radiance or Sacred Stones, that was put into Three Houses, and tried to be reliant on specialised stats whilst her peers all have powerful combat arts and abilities to thrive from. She's definitely a strange one, but I think she can be really fun to play around with. I think we can wrap this one up here. I hope this helps you to get the most out of Ingrid. If you would like to discuss this video, the channel, or Fire Emblem in general, consider joining the Discord. Once again, I would like to thank the people who back the channel on Patreon and support me in making content like this and everything else on the channel. It means a lot and it is greatly appreciated. There's a link in the description with all of the information and benefits you get for backing, which can be done for just £1 a month. Before you go, if you wouldn't mind rating the video, leaving a comment, and subscribing if you're interested in seeing more, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.